tendency there. Conversion, I know we didn't ultimately, you know, we had to put the defense back on the field, but they got to close games as well, and that's what a good team does. There's no panic in our guys. I think it says a lot about the character of this team and this staff after the last couple of weeks because you don't live, we don't live and die on the day-to-day -day narratives. We keep trying to improve and really proud of, proud of this team and the staff. Can you discuss Corderell's play and the uh, 151 yard rush in the uh, season high for you this far? Yeah, and that's what good teams have to do. That's why you can, you can live in all these narratives and they're all BS if you don't continue to grow and improve. And we felt good at it, about it, about the run game, regardless of what statistics and situations, whatever, we kept chipping away and today was a, a, it was a great job by the, by the entire offense running the football. Obviously C, having CP back adds an element. He's a, he's a warrior. He's a big physical presence that can do a lot for us, and that's clear. It was good to have him back. Personnel by uh, the player Dahlman coming in sure. at center and uh, Mikael Walker at linebacker for Dion. Yeah, so uh, that was a plan all week with uh, Henny and Drew, and I thought Matt responded. That's not an easy thing to go, to go through, and uh, yeah, it was a little unconventional, but we thought it was best for a football team, and I thought it made us better. Um, and we'll continue to do that. I mean, we, the guy's going to have to step up. It's a long season. You know, Dion had something pop up at the end of the week. And that's why, you know, that's why we developed the roster. And I'm proud as hell of Mike Walker. He stayed ready all year, and he, he played a, a good job today. Did a good job playing that role today. Arthur, just to kind of dig a little more on the Dalton Hemsworth thing. At center specifically, is that? We felt good about it. Like I said, I mean, you can write conventional rules, uh, I, I, whatever. But, you know, we felt good about the rotation. We got a lot of trust in both Henny and Drew and, and the work they've done all year with, with Matt. So it is what it is. We felt good about it, and that's why we went with it. So at the end of the first half, the clock ran down when they had the ball in a fourth down situation. Why did you not keep the clock time out there? Which one? Are you talking about their, their last play? There, it was, I guess it ended up being a second or last drive. You guys picked the ball up. It was when they were down and they were kicking the field goal. Mm -hmm. And they caught the clock once more. Well, it depends on the advantage. I mean, you could make a, a, an argument either way, but they were going to get the ball after half. So, you know, we you know, banged the timeout. We were advantage, I believe, it was second 11, right, when I called it. It was incomplete. I believe they had a third and 11. Uh, they checked it down. We tackled them, watching to see if they were going to call a timeout, seeing what they are going to do. You know, there was kind of uh, some consternation on the sideline. So I think he was looking at me thinking I was going to call it. I was waiting, just playing the game, because I felt with two timeouts, obviously we got – uh, we threw an interception. I thought we had plenty of time to go down and score a field goal. You know, it's like the, the balance between time and timeouts. And we felt good about it. And it really was, you know, the result of what happened on third down. So, yeah, you could, you could bang it there, but I didn't want to give them that opportunity. I wanted to see what they were going to do. I know a lot of this is, uh, is game flow, but to have uh, an offensive line performance where they allowed just one sack after rushing. Sure. Day, I think Jaguars had four total quarterback hits. What does that say about that group? So as they rally, they got a tough-minded group is what it says. It says, like I told you, I told you guys I've been saying all year, you can't live and die with the day-to-day -day narratives. You've got to see the big picture. You said you look at minor obstacles that get thrown your way in a long NFL season, and it says a lot about this team. We're chipping away. Um, so we're right in the mix, and we'll, we got, we got six games to go playing meaningful ball in December. And that's, that's where we want to be. Sure, you want your record to be better, but this, this team grinds. They, they, they do. Whether you start 0-2, you dip to 4-6, and the easy thing to do would be rationalize and say, oh, this, that. Nope. We're going to keep, continue to work and try to get better. How much more of the offense opened the belt up with Pat? I mean, we've seen it just for, for you as a play caller, how much more of the offense opened up with Pat? Well, I, I, there's a couple things. Um, certainly, he's a good football player, and you got to account for him. He plays a lot of roles, but he's a good, he's a physical, he's a hard guy to tackle. I mean, that's stating the obvious there. So it brings a different element in that way. Right? When you get late in the year and you're running the football, I mean, those, those, his hits add up, um, and he can do a lot for us. And, and it says a lot about him. He went out there and played today, and he made it made an impact. Um, so, but it, it really it's kind of you know we needed something early. Felt we got some good momentum, um, and he had, you know he was able to punch the ball in on that run, and it kind of got us going again. Did you have to him out of kick return because that's something that he's going to. That, I made that decision. You made it. Yes, because he would try to do everything. So sometimes you have to save people on themselves. You want you want to coach guys like that. Is, is that something that you would, would you look at maybe making that more of a permanent thing because because of how much he's done in this offense? Or? Well, I mean every every week presents a different set of challenges. So it, it would just be week to week, and we'll see where he's at. And you know that, that that'll be 
how we make those calls. I'm not going to sit here today and say, you know, back us up in the corner. Uh, but all options are on the table. On the 12-yard run, I think they see it on film. Uh, Keith gets a good lead block on the house. Uh, Jake and uh, Jalen get good blocks on the right side, kind of seals and opens it up for us. Uh, what, what type of power, what kind of a statement does a power run like that make for you? Well, you can be physical in the wide zone. Wide zone. So no matter what scheme, you can add a physicality to it. You know, you know we don't, which most people don't, but like, you know, I think we want to have a physical presence. Whatever scheme we're running, wide zone, tight zone, gap, uh, pin pull, you know, there's a lot of ways to try to run the football, but we want to have a physical element, and that's why you know, we train the way we do. I try to get up to the line of scrimmage, and, and uh, it's good to see those guys, you know, hard work pay off. And then next week's going to present a whole different set of challenges, and we got to find a way to go to win a division game at home. And uh, give a turn of, oh, uh, no, I was going to say the last time we talked to you post game, you, you made the comment that you said that I feel confident that we'll turn this thing around because we've done it before. Correct. And I, I just kind of think like, how do you see that group do this again? This not just today, but throughout the week as well. Well, you take some time. I mean, the you know the human emotion right after, you know, you lose two games like that. It's easy to, like I said, to be go through the range of emotions. But when you take a step back and you can have some perspective, and that's what we always try to say, here, have some perspective. Here's where we're at. We know why. We deserve to be where we're at. But it's not catastrophic. I think too many times people think of the you know, instant result. You know, oh, well, there's a lot of ways to go with it. Uh, but I, I don't believe in that, and this team doesn't. And you just we get back to work. Things we want to tweak, we'll continue to do that. So uh, it says a lot about the character of, of these players and the staff. You mentioned you had confidence in the run game coming in here. What was giving you that confidence? What did you see that made you feel Same thing that gave me confidence in Tennessee. You know, when you're, you're installing a system, uh, you know, there's a lot of revisionist history, but there was times in 18 where it didn't look too pretty. Um, and, you you know, we got going at the end of the year in the run game. It just takes some time sometimes. And and these guys work so hard. And the easy thing to do would be to, hey, let's, let's, let's panic. Let's just start grab bag and uh, stealing plays that we think work that other people that may not fit us. It's not what we've been training to do. I mean, we've been training to, to hit these combinations and they, and they paid off today. It doesn't guarantee that it'll be like that next week. I mean, we, like I said, next week we'll present a different set of uh, challenges, but it's what we believe in. And uh, I've been through it before. So again, talk about perspective and, and going back to work. Mm-hmm. Patterson. Oh, we, we can play Patterson. He got his defensive snap today. Did you see it? Did you mark that down? I may put him on the depth chart for D-Led next week at free safety. So. He might. With the how do you – is that something that you go with a hot hand or do you go in saying 2-2 two, two or 2-1? Two, yeah. Like how, how does that actually work? Well, like I said, it was a little unconventional, but we our plan was to go 2-2 two and two and take it from there. So – and we'll, we'll – assess when we get back and watch the film and have a day kind of think about it and, and just see where we go from here. And given the turnover uh, from, you know, Jerron said uh, the interception and then the big guys kind of making a, a mess in there and getting the they were. off and running. They've improved. The defensive uh, guys, again, Duran, Eric, these guys provide a lot of steady leadership. It's good to see Richie and Darren. It's a long season. We try to have perspective there too. Uh, they came up. They made plays. And the guys continually, Ade's continually have a, you know, just a quiet pro. And a lot of these young guys are having impacts and they're surrounded by some smart vets. And we got to play together as a team. I said, you know, you'd rather end the game with the ball in your hands, but to get the defense to get sure. the last stop to shut the door, just what kind of confidence can that give them? A lot. Yeah, it's a team game. I mean, you're, whatever circumstance, throwing our way. We would love to have converted that third down. We didn't. Uh, so, you know, credit to Jacksonville. But there's no panic. You know, the only thing there was the, you know, they pumped the, the play clock there. It was a little bit of a, a uh, you know, I don't know what happened there, why, you know, they pumped it and then went down. I'll, I'll get to the bottom of that. Um, you know, you take a delay, it's not catastrophic right there, but you don't want to see the, the false start on the next one. But, you know, and, and Thomas Moore said, another guy, you know, we came in this week, he's a pro, and he made an impact on the game. And, and not that Dustin Colquitt hasn't punted well either, but those are, that's why we have a good staff and everybody's collaborative. And then Terry and his staff and all the coaches, we all collaborate. And those are underrated moves that nobody thinks about, but he had a huge impact on this game.